when you're learning pieces, is it different to learn pieces for touring versus recording or? No, not so much. I, I've gotten better, I think. I, I mean, I've gotten better at being able to take a piece that I'm going to record. Because sometimes, you know, there's there's a lot of things that, that are on the CDs that I'm, I don't perform regularly. I may, you know, if I'm sort of re-engaged uh, uh, and there's a request or something like that for a, a particular piece, <clears throat> I may honor that request or, you know, there's there's many different things that come into play professionally. But anything that I record, I always have a certain amount of performances, public performances, to kind of get it in that sort of live, you know, setting as much as possible. I mean, it's still, there's, it's, it's not possible, there's, you know, to play a piece of music, you know, 50 times in concert before recording is great. I mean, that's really, you know, fantastic. And thankfully, with the, with the Bach, I uh, was able to do that with a lot of those things, but <clears throat> you don't always have that opportunity if you're trying to make an entire CD, uh, you know, of one composer. Mm -hmm. So, um, but we were able to we were able to do that. Uh, you know, I always make sure I have enough sort of you know try to get it into the live uh, arena, if you will, because my live playing is has a, has a very much a diff I think a very a different energy than um, just something sort of sitting down and recording, learning a piece and recording it. I think it, it needs to have that, that, um, it, it needs to have that feel of a live performance uh, sort of to grab the listener right away uh, and, and uh, to, you know, keep them engaged. And, and really, the performance is, is where you learn to do that with every piece. Mm -hmm. Do you have a process or a system that you go through for learning pieces? Or? Um, not so much. I wouldn't say it's, it's a system or a process, although I will say that in my late teens, um, I, uh, after I won the GFA in, uh, when I was 19 and, and around that time, I was coming up or, you know, I was beginning to have systems, if you will, that were comfortable for me that I could rely on, mm -hmm. uh, when it came to a piece of music that I, I knew would uh, ensure that I learn the piece very solidly, and uh, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> As you get into your late uh, late twenties, you know, and now I'm in and now I'm into my thirties. Um, a lot of those uh, systems become more organic. They more they become more fully <clears throat> integrated. Uh, I think mentally, and so and I've also had to learn in, in uh, once my uh, career started kind of getting to a different points uh, professionally. I of course had to learn uh, how to uh, m make those learning systems more and more efficient, and also more organic, if you will, um, so that I could do something very quickly if I had to. And I mean, over the last five concert seasons, <clears throat> I remember ten years ago if I had. If I had a concert season where I was performing, like, you know, I had performing about four or five hours of different music that year, I thought that that was, like, a lot. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, it's, it's, that's, like, a very much, like, a luxury now to have that. Like, I have this year, actually. <laughs> this, this season, I actually have about five hours of repertoire. But the previous four seasons, it was anywhere from six to even nine. Uh, so as you keep... Every year, it's like you keep growing and keep learning how to make things more efficient, mm -hmm. and at the same time, try to improve. Uh, you know, I'm trying to improve my playing, uh, which is uh, you know is not always easy to do. Right. What's your typical practice day look like then? Uh, <laughs> un yeah, unfortunately, there is no typical. As much as I try to, there there cannot really be a typical practice day. You kind of take the day as it comes. Every day is new and unique. Um, there's uh, on on the kind of schedule I have. It's not. It really is so, sort of a thing where if I if I'm going to st if I'm going to do an interview at two mm -hmm. and. Uh, and if I have then teaching from three to seven or eight, then I'd better get up early uh, <laughs> and uh, get the practicing and emails, you know, done. So you just kind of take the day as it comes, you know. Sometimes if you, you know, and if you're on the road and you have a master class in the morning, you know, maybe I'll grab a half an hour at eight thirty, 
you know, just a half an hour with coffee, with my coffee and stuff, or you know, tea and like a, an apple. Grab a half an hour. Then I feel again like my brain is sort of like engaged in the act of playing and and breaking things down and solving problems. And then I can te- and then I teach better that way too. So then, that, say we have a ten o'clock master class. Then there's lunch. Then I can get an hour in. And so you just every day you're just start, you're kind of like in this mode of thinking like okay this is how the day is going to go if I'm going to get everything done today. So you have to be very flexible. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's talk about your teaching a little bit. Um, what, sure. are, what are some of your, what are some of the common problems that you see with students, like musical or technical issues? Well, when I started as, uh, when I started teaching at the Cleveland Institute of Music in 96 or 97, um, and, and even to a certain point when I, uh, when I was heading, when I began to head the department at, in 2001, um, there, there's a lot, there were a lot of technical issues that needed to be addressed and, and uh, also practicing. Um, I think that's kind of how I got on this sort of kick for a while about, which I, I mean, not kick and not for a while. I mean, I'm always talking about it in master classes too when I encounter uh, students that are having difficulty, uh, you know, either mentally or physically or some combination of uh, the two things uh, with practicing. I mean, in learning, a lot of my work in teaching over the last 15 years has been about how to unlock the potential in students to practice at, their, at a very high level, very efficiently, so that, they're, so that when they practice, they are gleaning a lot of nutrients from the score, if you will, like uh, sort of like they're steaming their vegetables rather than microwaving them. <laughs> so um, it's and that's been a lot of my work over the last fifteen years. Nowadays, the students are quite good in terms in they're, 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 they play work very well coming in, and so I, it's a great luxury actually. I, I'm now basically working on, and they're not so much problems. I, I suppose it's more or less that there's a lack of information about interpretation, a lack of information uh, that that might be in a block, sort of like a, a hurdle in the student's way toward developing their musicianship. Really, so I mo- nowadays I'm I'm happy to say that I'm working more on. Um, matters of musicianship and interpretation and then if there's like a if, but you know every time you know I'm working once a week with this student with the individual students so it only takes a lesson you know a lesson or two or a couple things if you if you do see a technical wrinkle or a mechanical wrinkle that that could be ironed out because I am doing that all the time with my own playing I, feel, I still feel like I have you know uh, a lot to uh, discover in my own playing, and I'm passing the, that information directly on to my students, like as it ha- as it happens. Yeah. Um, so in a way, I kind of feel like we're all learning together. You know.